How's the weather where you guys are? It is so windy out here. This whole RV that I have is rocking like I'm on the ocean. Well, technically, Admiralty and Maritime Laws got their little net all over our land. And at the same time, flies are trying to get in here, you know, because uh, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you because I am like not going to tolerate any bugs. Do you hear me? Got you. That's what I told you. I told you. Don't be coming in here. Killed it. Just saying, I'm not even going to tolerate pests anymore. Just, I find you, you're out. Not supposed to be in here. Bad enough, I'm getting a little nauseated from all the rocking. You can kind of see my spools there. For sewing from my sewing machine that I have back here that I haven't done. I want to. But no, instead, I'm looking up boring stuff. I mean, there's things I really want to do that's more fun, you know, but I'm just saying, I kind of need to do this when you're in a war, which is what it is that we're in. We need to find out the stuff here. 31 USC 9302 prohibition against surety bonds. Uh, let's see what this is all about. PDF, PDF. Do I want to download a PDF of it? Guess so. Hey, Title 31, Money and Finance. This looks extremely boring. This doesn't look like anything I want to do, especially on Thanksgiving. But I'm feeling a little nauseated. I can't believe I had life cereal for dinner last night with milk. And I haven't had milk in a long time. Then I forgot that I had that, and I made myself some lemonade. Milk and lemonade and wheat do not go together very well. Let's just say I'm clean. Uh, it was awful. I thought I was dying. I really did. But anyways, I digress. So let's scroll through this. Um, because PJ, my friend PJ, was looking for this. And I didn't know what he was looking for, but we were trying to find what he was looking for and he says i found it so let's see what he found it looks like it's got to do with the banking act effective date promulgation of regulations boring stuff really boring boring stuff transitional and saving provision sureties and bonds definitions 9301 oh i hope i don't get too nauseated here this wind Rocking my boat here. Hey, look at that. Use of gover government obligations instead of surety bonds. Hmm. The one above that, 9302, says prohibition. Oh, prohibition against surety bonds for United States government personnel. Hmm. Huh. Do you work for the United States government? You're not supposed to be using surety bonds. Hmm. What else do we have here? Surety corporations. Are you a surety? Say no. Are you a beneficiary? Say yes. I am a beneficiary. I am not a surety. I'm a beneficiary. You know what makes me mad is when you have a title, like you have a title deed, it has your name there, but it's in all caps. They have made that all caps name the surety. And they try to get you, the living person, to be that all caps name. That's where they make you pay the taxes. Oh, they say, we're going to put it up for auction. We're going to sell it, blah, blah, blah. But there's something wrong right there with that innovation that they did. They did a transfer, a switcheroo. They converted your properly spelled name to the all caps name. And that's how they're getting away with this stuff. So we're going to look. Surety corporations acting outside area of incorporation and <gasps> place of principal office, civil actions and judgments against surety corporations. Civil penalty, priority of sureties, definitions, 
in this chapter. Number one, person means an individual, a trust. Oh, there you go. An estate. Oh, there you go. A partnership and a corporation. That's what person means. So we're all looking at person. That means individual. Am I an individual? It's so obfuscated, it's so muddy and blurred. It appears that person means individual. You will be safe in your person. Does that mean I'm safe in the shell of the person that you made? Am I protected? It's so strange, I'm telling you, because you know, we are all spirit beings and we have our soul, which is our mind, will, and emotions. And then we have this thing called the body. And I'm holding my arm like that because it hurts. I got in a car accident and it wasn't my fault. So I'm just waiting to see what up these people are dragging their feet. 10 days, man. State Farm. The farm. Isn't it kind of funny that they call themselves State Farm? Isn't that funny? What kind of a beast are you <laughs> that you're on the farm? That's what it is. That's just very interesting that these parables happen to me. Okay, so let me see. Eligible obligation number two means any security designated as acceptable in lieu of a treasury bond by the Secretary of Treasury. Hey, that sounds interesting. Eligible obligation means any security designated as acceptable in lieu of a surety bond by the Secretary of the Treasury. Hmm, Secretary of the Treasury. Hmm. I think my birth certificate is lodged over there at the Secretary of Treasury. Okay, so now historical revision notes in clause, the words after the semicolon are omitted as unnecessary because of the restatement. It's kind of interesting. Clause two is substituted for six colon 15, last sentence. Oh, participants can now see your application. What application? Oh, hey, L. John. Hey, how's how's it going? Anyone want to join the Zoom right now? <laughs> I didn't see you. Yeah, I think I'm recording. I think I am. It is recording. Yeah. <laughs> I'm reading this because this, yep. is, this is the one that PJ found. And it's very interesting. I thought maybe if we read it, we could maybe all collaborate and possibly get to our destination faster. <laughs> so let me see. I'm over here on this amendment site. Are you able to see the big words? Are they nice and big for you guys? Or is it just big for me? Yep, looks good. Okay, cool. So I'm kind of just skimming over all this stuff. Uh, if you have anything to say, feel free to just hop in. Let me see, read as follows. Okay, government obligation means a public debt obligation of the United States government and an obligation whose principal and interest is unconditionally guaranteed by the government. That kind of sounds good, doesn't it? L. John, Sujuris? Possibly. <laughs> I know, it's sounding good. They don't have to be bonded, huh? Hmm. Well, I was reading over here on the left side on the top, and it looked like it said something about there was a prohibition against surety bonds for people who are, are persons who are, um, let me see, right here, see right here. That's yeah, on the I bottom right. Do, prohibition against surety bonds for United States government personnel. That's prohibition against them using surety bonds if you work for them. So over here, 
what does this say? May not require or obtain a surety bond for a member of the uniformed services or an officer or employee of the United States government in carrying out official duties. Oh. Let me read it from the top. Here it is. 9302, prohibition against surety bonds for United States government personnel. An agency except a mixed except a mixed ownership government corporation, that is, may not require or obtain a surety bond for a member of the uniformed services or an officer or employee of the United States government in carrying out official duties. This section does not affect the personal financial liability of the member, officer, or employee. Hmm. You know how like when you have a driver's license and they want you to have insurance, but yet that driver's license is like a shadow identity card for the shadow government official? <laughs> Just that's that's where it is. We need to pick that part apart. Do you have anything to say about that, John? Well, we thought that they had bonds, the government officials, but evidently they don't have to, or maybe it's the state ones. I think that there's a the, this one's about surety bonds for the United States government personnel you know how they say right. that we are the surety but we're really not the surety I'm trying to understand all that let me read a little bit more the words agency except a mixed ownership government corporation are substituted for words before last comma an agency of the federal government because of section 101 of the revised title and for consistency, the words member of the uniform services or an officer or employee of the United States government are substituted for civilian, hey, substituted for civilian employees or military personnel. Uh, are we civilian employees or military personnel? for consistency with other titles of the United States Code. The words in carrying out official duties are substituted for in connection with the performance of their official duties to eliminate unnecessary words. And because of the restatement, the words to the federal government are omitted as surplus. Oh, the words member, officer, or employee are substituted for employees and personnel because of the restatement. So you know how they do that thing? They call it a, what do they call that? Mm, when they chop off a portion of your numbers on a statement, like if you put your social security number on something, and they chop off a few of the numbers. What do they call that word? Do you know what that's called? Hmm. Truncate? Yeah, yeah, truncate. Thank you, thank you. Yes, that's the word. It looks to me like they're truncating the words in carrying out official duties are substituted for in connection with the performance of their official duties to eliminate unnecessary words and because of the restatement. So they're hiding stuff here. I think that they have made us <laughs> employees, you know, and they're hiding it. Do you see that, John? Do you see that right here? Put your oh. cursor on what exactly you're talking about. What? Right here. So agency of the federal government, okay. They said something up here about everything that's 
uh, after the, what is it called? Semicolon right here, look. In clause one, the words after the semicolon are omitted as unnecessary because of the restatement. So then they go, oh, they're telling you, they're letting you know that after the semicolon, we're just going to omit it, taking it out because it's redundant, they're saying. Then you look at this other clause too, it's substituted for 617, the last sentence for consistency and to eliminate unnecessary words. So then we go down here where they amended it. See how they amended it. And it says it uh, uh, generally prior before they amended it. It used to read as follows. This is what it used to say. Government obligation means a public debt obligation of the United States government and an obligation whose principal and interest is unconditionally guaranteed by the government. So it used to say that. And now they're saying that they truncated it, omitted a lot of superfluous words because they're, they're hiding it is what they're doing. So let's see. Here we go. Uh, an agency except a mixed ownership government corporation may not require or obtain a surety bond for a member of the uniformed services or an officer or employee of the United States government in carrying out official duties. This section does not affect the personal financial liability of the member officer or employee. Are you an employee? I'm not. Are you an officer? I'm not. <laughs> Do you work for the federal government? I don't, but some people do. The words agency except- Not as far as I know. <laughs> yeah, huh? <laughs> the words agency except a mixed ownership government corporation are substituted for words before last comma, an agency of the federal government because of section 101 of the revised title for consistency. So here we go. The words member of the Uniform services or an officer or employee of the United States government are now substituted for civilian employees or military personnel. I'm not a civilian employee and I'm not a military personnel anymore. For consistency with other titles of the United States Code. So here we go. The words in carrying out official duties are substituted for in connection with the performance of their official duties. All right, so to eliminate unnecessary words and because of the restatement. The words to the federal government are omitted as surplus. So apparently federal government was omitted so let's see, the words member, officer, or employee are substituted for employees and personnel of the federal government. They just took that part out. <laughs> That's funny. So here we go. Let me see, which one was it? It's 9302. That's the one. <laughs> That's the one. That he that PJ was looking for the 9302, what we just went over. They took out the words to the federal government. So I mean, we're not federal government employees and stuff. So some of the other videos that I did, like that 28 one, what has the crashed car, my crashed car on the front. 
was talking about uh, insurances and stuff like that. They're saying that, oh, and then I also put in the California vehicle code where it says that all cars on the highway or all automobiles on the highway are for employees of the state. But look, we don't work for the federal government. It says it's omitted. They took it out. They amended it. So I'm just saying they're hiding stuff. It's subversive. Well, yeah, you're driving their car around, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because on the blue, what is it, the pink slip that's blue and pink, the top line, it says state of California, all capitalized. I yep. have it around here somewhere. We just got to send them the, the invoices for their insurance bill for the car and the repairs, right? Yeah, that maybe we to need be to be an employee me. of the... Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> seem to be your employee this is your car uh you need to pay the bills <laughs> yeah i have a feeling that that's with everything like your house your land your timeshare your car and all the other stuff i have a feeling it's Seems with everything like i don't think we really i don't think people own anything especially if you have to register if you register you're gifting it to them. And then they make our name the uh, what doing business as shell. The person, they make it the right here. Person means an individual, a trust, an estate, a partnership, and a corporation. So, what do you think of the word individual? John. That's a tricky, tricky word. The trickiest word in there. That's what I'm thinking. I am so divided. A, it could be a single entity. Do you see this word right here? Individual. I yeah. am divided. Dual. Yep. <laughs> Duality right there. I know. I have a it's, feeling. It's also uh, uh, an, any entity, you know, like a, a corporate, you know, uh, so, some corporate structures or whatnot. They're nested trusts or nested, you know, organizations within organizations, conglomerates. So it could be any part of them as a person. Yep. I have a feeling that. Um... And, and I think they used individual there to make you think that people mm. can be persons. That's what I'm thinking. Too. Yeah, I agree. I had to kill a fly. Sorry. Cool flies. Snow. When people are not persons. Yeah, you're right. Hmm. So this was very interesting. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to listen to this being read to myself over so I can get it in better instead of reading it over and over and over again. It's been working out that I read it and then I can just listen to it, you know, so I can mm. get it in my head. It's been working. This is very interesting. Use. Oh, hey, here's the use of eligible obligations instead of surety bonds. Hey, this might have been your question about the uh, bond. How to use it? Do you want me to go on and read this part? Sure. Okay. How long till your Zoom runs out? Uh, I don't know. Just maybe 15 more minutes or so. But if you want to read this, you can. Okay. Do you want to read this? This part. Okay, so uh, 9303, use of eligible obligations instead of surety bonds. If a person is required under a law of this United States to give a surety bond, the person may give an eligible obligation as surety instead of a surety bond, and the obligation shall 
Number one, be given to the official having authority to approve the surety bond. Number two, as determined by the Secretary of the Treasury, have a market value that is equal to or greater than the amount of the required surety bond. And three, authorize the official receiving the obligation to collect or sell the obligation if the person defaults on a required condition. Section B1, an official receiving an eligible obligation under Section A of the section may deposit it with a large capital A, the Secretary of the Treasury. And on to the next page. I'm trying to figure out yeah, how to capital get Capital B, or is I that know. it? I'm trying to find it. Like, I don't know how to get to it. I have a feeling I might have just made a PDF yeah. of this. Oh. There is no more. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's it because uh, at least for, uh, I made a PDF of this and I think that's what this is, just a, a page. But this will be good for everybody if they want to know more, they can go to 31 USC 9302. Or if they want to read more of the 9303, they can do that because I don't see any way I can move forward unless I I guess I can put it up here because uh, I made a PDF of this. Let me just see. Okay. Oh, uh, see how I made a PDF there? 319302. Let's try it. I don't know. It's helpful if you know how to navigate through these things. I don't know how to do it all. But anyways, I thought that was kind of interesting. I think it's going to sink in better when we um, hear it again. But this is the one, 9302, prohibition against surety bonds for the United States government personnel. I mean, if uh, surety bonds. I know I filled out one of these surety bonds for the GSA bonds, but that's what's making you the surety yeah. to, you know, and then and carrying out your official duties. Huh. I don't know. What do you think, peoples? It means something. I feel like I'm you know, groping in the darkness. <laughs> I don't know at all. Do yeah, you know some more? That's a little small for me to read. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, there's, there's, I don't know how to get into the second part. Let me see. Let me see if I can scroll down here. 93. Other, yeah, that's it. Because that's just the PDF that I made. But anyways, I was thinking, thank you very much for reading that. When we uh, maybe listen to this, it might sink in better. But how are, how's your Thanksgiving going for you today, John? Going to do anything special? Not sure. Uh, mm. I'm just staying home. I'm pretty sure a lot of people Our are. Our family's doing Thanksgiving on Saturday. Oh, okay. I gotcha. I kind of. I guess had a turkey two days ago and we've been eating it, me and my dog. <laughs> I've been eating it for the last few days. So that's my Thanksgiving, <laughs> but that's okay. Oh, so it's like Thanksgiving season for you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Instead of a dinner. <laughs> well, it's, it's kind of like eating an elephant. You got to eat a little bit at a time. You cannot eat the whole turkey for yeah. one person. All in one sitting, you know. Does karma like turkey? She loves it. And she loves the the bones you know the big bones to chew on she, instead of stealing the neighbor's bones she just says i given her her own little turkey leg bone that she can chew on yeah well all righty okay well i'm gonna go ahead and end this and i'll just um edit it towards the end <laughs> thank you john for being here okay appreciate you <laughs> you're welcome happy thanksgiving Thanks, you too.
Bye.